My name is Daniel Britton and I'm obsessed with flavour. After years of working in kitchens with global cuisines, I decided that my route was definitely British food, but essentially combining the tastes and flavours from around the world. In this masterclass, I'm going to show you some of my best dishes with that global twist. So let's get on with it. Right, I'm going to show you guys how to make a summer pea and goat's cheese risotto. Um, we're going to start off, make sure you've got your stock nice and warm. The reason we have our stock warm already is when we add it to the rice, it absorbs quicker. That's uh, all part of cutting down on the cooking time. We've got our water on for our peas. Now we're going to put the pan on and get the risotto on the go. So we've got onion. We're going to start off with our onions, which I'm just going to roughly chop through for you. It's good to get a nice sort of small dice on the onion. You want them to be similar size to the rice grain. And while we're doing that, we can add our rapeseed oil to the frying pan. I use extra virgin um, British English rapeseed oil. Um, I think it's important to use things that are made in this country, support our communities, our farmers, um, our producers. It's uh, yeah, very important for me. I know risottos are Italian and of course if you're in Italy or you're cooking it for an Italian you should probably use extra virgin but this is my um, my recipe. There you go. What we don't want to do, we don't want to colour our onions, we don't want um, any sort of brown caramelisation on there. We want to try and keep them just translucent as they cook off in the oil. This is one of my favourite dishes, especially in the summer. Uh, lovely colours, lovely flavour and with the goat's cheese as well, just adds that sort of saltiness that, that we all love. So, garlic. And just finely chop the garlic roughly, quickly. What we don't want to do, we don't want to burn the garlic whilst we're, whilst we're cooking it. So we don't add it in straight away with the onion. Also, add a little bit of salt to the onion. Salt helps the onion from um, caramelising too much, uh, believe it or not. That is science, which I'm not an expert in. It just helps keep it nice and sort of translucent. Right, there's our garlic roughly chopped. That's about two cloves of garlic in there. There we go, we'll give that a little stir. Now it's important to keep it moving just so it doesn't catch on at the bottom. Then we take our rice. Now the reason I get the rice in now is because with the heat that it's got, we're gonna release some of the starch from the rice. Now that gives you a creamier finish. I think, um, I read a book on risottos, 100 risottos from 100 Italian chefs, and uh, I'm trying to follow the, uh, the law, I think it should be, of how to make a decent risotto. You can add, uh, sometimes you can add chopped up celery, diced celery to your mix, your onions, your garlic, um, but I think mainly it's just onions and garlic. Keeps it nice and simple. And you can see as we're cooking the rice out, it just starts to go a bit shiny. It's starting to release its starch. Now, well, where is our, our vino? So we're going to use a bit of vermouth. I like to use um, vermouth in my risottos. I saw uh, you know, many recipes that I've read. It's, it's kind of one of the, the main alcohols for it. You can hear that's absorbing nicely. I'm just going to move the stock off of the heat. There we go. So that, that rice is becoming nice and shiny now. You can see it's releasing all its starch. And we're going to start by adding our vegetable stock. So we're not going to add all of it. We're going to add a couple of ladles. Uh, we'll let that absorb. If we were to add all the stock now, you'd create a bit of a soup. And it'll probably go a little bit too stodgy and the rice will cook too quickly. So what we're doing here is the, the stock is um, absorbing into the rice, building all those lovely flavours. You can see with the heat we got in the pan, that's actually quite a, uh, that's cooked quite nicely, quite quickly. We're going to add some more stock now. Beautiful. You can actually see it's already getting creamy, which is um, fantastic. There we are. Now keep adding our stock nice and gently. 
and we'll let the rice cook out for a little bit. So what we're going to do whilst that's uh, cooking away, we're going to add our peas to our water. So the reason that we're adding peas to the water, we're going to make ourselves a nice little sort of pea puree sauce to go through the risotto towards the end. And that'll give you that beautiful green colour. So I'm just adding the peas. And they'll cook in about four or five minutes. Not too long at all. Keep stirring your risotto. There are stories that it's meant to be uh, only stirred um, clockwise. Um, I don't know how true that is, but I do do it only clockwise. Don't want to upset anyone. There we go. I think we can add a touch more, touch more stock to that, I think. Before we do that, I'm just going to add our sliced courgettes. So with the sliced courgettes, we're just going to add them to the pan. We've just halved them. We've taken them, um, cut them down the length and then cut them into crescents. Uh, you can cut them how you like. You can cut them, you can dice them. Um, not a problem. I think it's just a, a decent size for the, for the dish. And we're just going to, they're going to cook out nice and easy in here. There we go. You can see that's getting creamier again as the stock's getting absorbed. There we go. Keep adding stock. Keep adding our stock. So the thing with the rice as well, the cooking of the rice is really important. So um, you don't want to overcook it because it will just get all soft and it will turn into sort of like a rice pudding. So um, in Italy, you know, a lot of their pasta is eaten al dente, which is, uh, you know, has a little bit of bite on the tooth. So that's what we're looking for with our risotto rice. So we don't want it too soft, but we just need a little bite on there as well, just to create a nice bit of texture. So keep giving that a stir. Whilst we're checking our peas, making sure that they're uh, coming up to temperature. There we go, right. Let's check the peas. So we just gotta make sure that they're soft enough for our sauce. Always back to the risotto, always checking, always making sure it's not sticking, not drying out too much. And if you don't have uh, vermouth at home, um, just use white wine, just use a nice, nice nice, quality white wine, anything you've got in the fridge. Not a problem, it's all about adding layers of flavour. We started with the onions, the garlic, the white wine, building up flavour, building up flavour. Right, with this, you can either add, you can add your peas if you like, about a few minutes towards the end to cook. But what we're going to do, a little bit of a chefy thing that we used to do in the restaurant, we'd make a, a kind of like a pea puree, a pea sauce that's going to go through your risotto and it just gives it that colour. Um, that I like. I think if you're having like a pea risotto, you know, it's a sort of summer pea risotto, I think it needs to have, um, it needs to have those, those colours that pop out. So, let's just drain the peas off. There we go. Now we're going to add a touch of stock to our peas, just so we can um, Get a nice consistency on the puree. And we're also going to add a knob of butter just to give it a bit of richness. Go back to our risotto, give it a good stir. Now it's not sticking because we keep moving, we keep moving, we keep adding stock so we know it's not going to stick. Right now, the noisy bit. A little bit of salt in there with the pea puree and the blender. Keep the blender down at the bottom, otherwise uh, you might have an accident. There we go. You can just sort of see we're starting to get that sort of green pea sauce in there now with the peas and the puree, making a nice green uh, mix for our, for our finish. There we go. So it's important to leave some whole peas in there because it looks good. Also, you want that sort of texture from the peas as well, so you're not just eating rice and courgettes, you want a bit of texture in there as well. Just going to a touch more stock, give that a little stir, and then our peas on our pea puree are going in. And then we're going to cook that for another sort of two minutes, two, three minutes.
There we go. And see that colour coming through? I mean, that's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. So, what we don't want to do, we don't cook it for too long. We want to keep that nice, vibrant green. So we're going to add our rocket, which we're just going to wilt through the risotto. And rocket's got that really nice peppery kick to it, so we're adding another layer of flavour. So whatever dish you do, it's always important to think about when you start, flavour, flavour, flavour. Even at the end, which I'll show you the little end bit that we're going to do. It does have a name, and I think it's something along the lines of a mantithicana, but I'm not quite sure. So I hope I got it right. But what it is, is butter, parmesan cheese, and then you fold that through, and that's what gives you a nice, silky, glossy finish to a risotto. I'm actually going to take that off the heat as well, because we don't need to cook it any longer. And finish off folding that parmesan and the butter through. And you can never have too much parmesan, in my eyes. Um, I think the more the merrier. So we'll just um, add the rest. And then we'll finish off our lovely risotto with a few cubes of goat's cheese. There we go, and that'll just um, that'll melt through nicely as well, and add a little bit of saltiness as well. There we go. So that is our risotto, guys. That's our summer pea goat's cheese risotto, which is perfect for a you know a little family get together around the table on a Sunday, have a break from the roast dinner. There we go. Fantastic.